Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the sound system demo of the excellent 2021 Volvo V90 and its 19 speaker Bowers & Wilkins audio system. This is gonna be an in-depth review. We're gonna take a look at how the infotainment system works, speaker locations, audio inputs, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay demonstrations. Get out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling. And I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now, if you don't wanna hear any of the mumbo jumbo at the beginning and you just wanna hear audio demos go ahead and click through we've got chapters in the video and you can get to the part where we're driving and just listen to the music before we get started let's hop out let's take a quick look at the car this is the v90 cross country technically so it is the highest end wagon that volvo makes coming in here at a cool sixty-seven thousand dollars. nicely outfitted it's a wonderful luxury car if you want to see more on the v90 Check the links in the description for our full review and our highway fuel economy test. We always do this test with lossless, uncompressed audio files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system and high quality binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test of the sound settings set to their factory defaults. Let's take a look at those now. The Volvo Census infotainment system, working quite well, always gets computer upgrades and runs faster and faster. It is one of my preferred systems on the market, although it's not for everybody. Two ways of adjusting audio controls. You can pull down here, go into sound settings, and you've got a standard front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance, and then treble mid-range, sorry, no mid-range, just treble, bass, subwoofer, and a full-fledged equalizer right here with a few presets, warm, bright, dynamic, custom. We're not gonna go through all the EQ settings, but we will go through the treble, bass, and subwoofer. Now for those of you who watch these tests regularly, I just wanna point out how quick and easy it is for me to adjust these right to where I want them. You've seen in other cars, I'm fidgeting around, it's not always easy to move these little touch sliders. This one works really well. System volumes, you can adjust different volumes for ringtones and voice navigation, things like that. Then you can also go to the right side of the screen here and click this sound experience, and that brings some other options for you. You've got Studio mode, which is going to give you more of an, un an unaltered audio experience. And you can have that for all seats, focused on driver or rear. Then you have individual stage, which I like listening to. It gives you a little bit of a 360 experience. I like to have it around 33% intensity and 180 degree envelopment. You can mess around with that. We'll go through once the song picks up here and sample some of those. On top of that, you have concert hall. So that's supposed to replicate the Gothenburg Symphony Orchestra Concert Hall in Gothenburg, Sweden. And then new for the 2021 models, the Jazz Club option. So it's supposed to replicate the Nefertiti Jazz Club in the heart of Gothenburg. So those are both kind of neat. I do find myself using those every now and again, but mostly I use individual stage. So this is about where I usually have it set. You can also go full intensity, full envelopment, and all the way down. We're going to start the test in studio though, that should be the most pure audio experience and then maybe I'll change it to individual stage later on in the test. For audio controls, you've got a nice center volume knob, very easy to click, works well. You also have volume up and down on the right side of the steering wheel. For track selection, you've got physical controls flanking the volume knob, you've got physical back and forth on the steering wheel right by the volume, and then if you're in the right screen, you can also do it right here with that. 
Audio inputs, you have your standard AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio. Actually, is there AM? I don't actually see. Is there not AM radio in this car? There's FM, Sirius XM, radio favorites. That's not it. Bluetooth, USB, iPod. Wow, is there no? Let me see. AM radio. Please repeat. AM radio. Please repeat. FM radio. Became really good friends. Wow, I don't think there's an AM radio in here. Not a huge deal for most people. I'm just always used to saying that there's AM radio. Okay. Well, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay support, USB-A. There's some USB ports in the back of the car, but I don't think they're data. I think they're just for power. And then you do have some streaming options like Pandora. Is there anything else? I think it might just be Pandora. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, you don't have a disc player and you also don't have USB Type-C. No 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack and apparently no AM radio. Very interesting. Speaker locations. This is a 19 speaker, 1400 watt system. Starting in the bottom left, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and actually I made a mistake. There's only two up in the center of the car, and then nineteen is the subwoofer. So that little center speaker in the front is only two. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay demonstrations. Start out with Android Auto. Turn that there. I already got it brought up. You see, it sort of brings it up in this small area of the screen. It's still perfectly functional, works really nicely, good refresh rate, very responsive, but it doesn't take up nearly as large section of a screen as some other vehicles. Pop in Apple CarPlay. That was the first time I've actually had to answer a prompt on my iPhone to get CarPlay to work. But there you see it, looks really nice, works super well, very straightforward. All right, let's get on the road. Way through this song, I will switch it into the th uh, theater mode, whatever it was called, the concert hall. Sounds pretty cool.
Bowers and Morgan Systems do an amazing job at keeping clarity and crispness and satisfaction across all volume levels and all types of music. I can listen to the song very quiet or I can turn it up as loud as my ears can handle and I still have powerful bass, it's still crisp, I still have good high ends and nothing in the mid range is coming through too sharp. Really impressive. Now that we're at 70, I'll turn the music down, let you hear what it's like. Very refined, very quiet, no surprise there. This next song, turn the bass all the way up and the subwoofer all the way up. just as good as the Volvo XC90 systems so I what I really need to do is start knocking everything else I write down a little bit more because this is pretty much as close to a 10 out of 10 as you're gonna get outside of a Rolls-Royce or maybe I haven't heard an S-Class Burmester system but that's probably way up there as well <laughs> but put it this way there's no car in my recent memory that's been this good even the Cadillac Escalade Escalade had a tad bit more impressive power, but in terms of overall clarity and crispness, the V90 wins. I would also put it above the ELS system in the Acura TLX for loud listening. For easy listening, soft music, the ELS is a little bit more impressive, especially if you're listening to 5.1 surround tracks. 
but for all music, the V90 sounds tops. So I'd be giving it a nine and a half out of 10. Very, very close to a 10 out of 10. Objectively speaking, luxury car, kind of taking everything into consideration, still about a nine and a half. I think you can get this for a pretty good price. You probably make your way out of the door for around 60 grand with the Bowers and Wilkins system if you played your cards right. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more on the V90, check the links in the description. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.